competition is complete here at the Tier Pro Swim Series in Santa Clara, California. Four days of intense competition from Olympic stars and some people we may be seeing rising to the top to make the Olympic team in 2020. I'm Jeff Cummings here with Natalie Codlin and Natalie, four days of competition was really intense even though a lot of these men and women are really in hard training. They're in hard training and they're in that last little push before nationals to qualify for Pan Packs and next year's World Championships. So some people are about to start taper and I think they're going to welcome that taper. Yes, yes, very much <laughs> Yes, so. and a lot of people are going into training camp. So we saw some really great swims. I think one of the ones that stands out the most for me is Simone Manuel. She was so solid in that 50 free tonight, her third one of the night, 24-6, and then 53-8 uh, in the uh, 100 free. It was amazing. Yeah, she was amazing. One of the many <laughs> amazing swimmers we saw in the pool. It wasn't all fun in the water. It was a lot of fun outside of the pool earlier today from about 2 30 to 4 30 you see him there Caleb Dressel led a very intense game of four square <laughs> I mean he just put tape down and invited all his new friends to join him and it was really cool to watch he just you know he didn't swim that 50 fly today so I think this was kind of his makeup and said if I don't do the 50 fly I'll just play two two hours of four square and a lot of people have fun he was I think he was having a lot of fun with you have too. to have a competitive outlet somewhere so if it has to be four square I guess so be it yeah. and <laughs> joining us now is Caitlin Sandino. Hey guys, hello. Well, good, good to have you here. Thank and you. I know you probably wish that Caleb was doing that 50 fly. He's on your squad. I know, I got here and I saw him playing this four square. It's getting kind of intense. I'm like, don't waste your energy, don't waste your energy. I have you in my 50 fly. And they're like, oh, he's not swimming tonight. I was like, what? Yep. Maybe he's not swimming. Surprise. Oh, <laughs> like, swimmers aren't showing up. How am I supposed to win points? As long as I beat Jason, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you're safe to beat Jason. I think if we could all scratch and still beat Jason, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I do a but like I said, he may leave Zach, all of you and surprise you in the end. I guess we shouldn't joke. I think yeah. it's statistically <laughs> impossible, but we could all hope. You yeah. would know that too. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> so, Caitlin, you just came in here to, um, to Santa Clara from yeah, Colorado Springs I where did. you're participating as, a, as an analyst for the Warrior Games. Yes. Tell us about that experience. Oh, this is amazing. So, I was uh, commentating this swimming for the Department of Defense Warrior Games. Uh, I. I'm going to have a hard time with the words right now because I'm still unable to wrap my head and mind and heart around it all, but so inspiring, so incredible on um, you know, our heroes that we send you know, to defend our country coming back um, and being able to compete and train and give them something to look forward to mm -hmm. and then to see them in the water. And it was so cool. I was telling um, some friends today that uh, we made it on Sports Center. There um, was an athlete, Captain James Howard, that was competing in not only the 50 free, but he did the 50 back and the 100 freestyle and the relay and he's a quadriplegic and he's out there didn't give up once nobody helped him his 100 took over 15 minutes the whole wow. crowd went crazy I had goosebumps I had tears I learned I needed to wear waterproof makeup at this <laughs> event because I was a mess after yeah. watching everybody it, it's just so inspiring and you know there people are like you know don't show pity I'm like I'm not showing pity I am just so blown away this is the most inspiring most incredible uh, most next level event I've ever been a part of so I was just really really honored to be at, at the Warrior Games. It really shows you you know you you two know how much work goes into just being to being an Olympic athlete but you know the work that they have to go through just to, to be able to come back after serving our country right. and wanting to find that that outlet that they need right. and and just like you said never giving up. Yeah definitely mm -hmm. I think it's really cool too because it's a segue also for the Paralympics right you know and that's I think it's a movement that's really growing and, and booming and getting the attention that it finally deserves and and you can only come compete in the Warrior Games for two years and then they could use that maybe as a stepping stone or figure out if this is something that they really want to go for, if they get the, the cuts or the standards. So it's neat to see the potential and kind of kind of like, you know, you make nationals, you make Olympic trials, you can go on to the Olympic, you know, the, the whole process of qualifying for these events. I was following you along on Instagram stories and it was so moving. Like I can't imagine seeing it in person. And that was like, I was having a hard time wrapping my head around. I was like, okay, I want to tell my husband all about it. And mm -hmm. I was like, all right, Pete, like, I can't, like, unless you were there mm -hmm. and my sister was there with me and I was so happy to have a family member there that I'm like, you get it. You know what we just went through. Um, unless you're there, I think it's hard to put into words, but you, I mean, obviously you picked up on how incredible it was. Yes, yeah. of course. Obviously, but just next level <laughs> being there. Well, when I see Natalie Coughlin and Caitlin Sandino next to each other, my Yay! mind immediately goes back to the 2004 <laughs> Olympics. You two were on that 800 freestyle relay. Yeah. Broke yes. that historic world record that everybody was trying to break for, I think it was like 16 years. <laughs> and you guys 
did it. <laughs> I can't yeah, you're not, you're not counting. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know those statistics. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you know, when you think back on that that relay, what, mm -hmm. what comes to mind for you two? I just remember what a celebration it was. We were so confident going into that race. Um, I let off. You fin you anchored, right? Yes. yes. Um, and going into that race, we had such confidence. We're like, we know we're going to win. <laughs> but, we, like, you know, not to get caught. I had confidence because she was leading us off. I was yeah. like, yeah. Like, oh, we're good. Oh, but we're it's golden. Like, by how much, you know? Yeah. And the whole time was a celebration. Right. You know, Caitlin had the best meet of her life on the world's <laughs> biggest stage. It was the most amazing thing. And I just will never forget that award ceremony. Yes. We're all singing together, yes. uh, had the laurel wreaths on our head, uh, broke the oldest East German world record. Mm -hmm. um, it was oh, yeah. a big celebration. I won't forget because I had never been on an international relay before. And I had had this, you know, great meet so far. And um, one thing led to another that like, you're going to be on the relay. You're going to be on final yeah. relay and you're going to be the anchor. I was like, oh my gosh. And then they're like, but Natalie's leading off. I'm like, okay, okay. And I won't forget when we had a little team meeting, you're like, yeah. all right, I'm going to, you know, conserve a little in that yeah. first hundred, yeah. that second hundred. I'm like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And oh, you conserved on that first hundred. I, I think I was eighth like, at the hundred. I was like, don't worry, I got I'm it. the block. Like, and then she just creams them. I'm like, oh, we got this. Oh, that's my girl. And like you said, just yeah. we were ahead by a lot, but were we going to break that world record? And I don't really follow times very much, and I don't know records very well. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really anything that was on my radar, but it was definitely on my radar once I was like almost my turn and I remember how loud you were screaming and oh it was a it was a party like no other after that that's for sure yeah was that was an amazing one and I know the mm -hmm. men had a really exciting 800 free relay but you guys stood out just because you <laughs> broke that historic record that yeah. everybody just said it has to go down yeah it has to go though that East German record has to go down so mm -hmm. it was just fun to watch that and I, like I said when I when I knew you were going to be on the show I was like Oh. <laughs> that relay it just stands out Thank for me. Thank you. I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> In a good way. Yeah, Happy good tears, I hope. Happy yeah. tears. Well, yeah. Caitlin, it's been so good to catch Thanks up with you. Me. Thank yeah. you for, Thank for you stopping so much. Much. You guys rock this show. I'm, I'm so happy to be here, and uh, it's fun to watch you both. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Caitlin Sandino. <laughs> More to come here on Deck Pass Live, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Oh, I'll see you soon. With new flexible USA swimming memberships, you can be on America's swim team and still do the other things you love. So many things that I want to try. <laughs>Everybody's breaking down equipment here at the International Swim Center, the Pro Swim Series, getting ready for to make this International Swim Center more like what we kind of know it to be when it's not um, in, <laughs> in, in meet mode. And of course, the next Pro Swim Series stop is in Columbus. So I think a lot of the signage that we see around here is going to be flying across the country to Ohio. Yes. Again, like I said, four days of such intense competition. You talked about Simone in the 1500 mm -hmm. freestyles. Tonight was really good. We had some epic swims. Uh, one that really was getting... Um, I was really excited about is that men's 400 freestyle and yes. I think the matchup that I was looking for was the 2008 Olympic gold medalist Taewon, Tark Taewon of Korea and then Zane Grothy of the United States mm -hmm. who's been winning a lot and there's Zane Grothy walking out there in the yellow cap but it was actually not Ta Park Taewon in this it was Jack Levant the upstart 18 year old up there in lane number two but Zane Grothy turned it on that last 50 and you can see that wind up in that from third from the bottom he just really turned it on and he just took off. It was definitely a bit of a surprise, but it was nice to see Zane really being pushed that, that entire race uh, because, you know, he needs to practice that. Uh, he, he's won every 400 free, including this one. Yep. Um, and he's, he's done a really, really nice job. And 350 point, I think that was his time. And yes. I think he was happy with it. He has to be happy with that. And I think he was just happy that that race turned out the way it was because <laughs> I'm sure he saw that Jack Levant was way over there pushing the lead and, and that he had enough at the end to be able to Put to, to hang on and win. Yeah, and in this pool with the shadows, with the sun, it could be a little bit difficult. So I'm sure he was, you know, looking at his competitors mm -hmm. across the pool, but not entirely sure where they are. So yeah. I'm sure he was 
glad once he saw that. Yeah, that good job, scoreboard. Zane. I'm sure that's <laughs> going to help him with the tier leaderboard stains. Yeah. I think Chase Case is a little bit ahead, but yeah. Zane's is going to be putting on the pressure. So we had 50s of the 50 uh, break knockouts yes. of the butterfly backstroke, breaststroke, and freestyles. Mm -hmm. And one that I was really looking forward to is that women's 50 backstroke, Olivia mm -hmm. Smoliga, and I thought it was going to be Kylie Moss of Canada, mm -hmm. but it turned out to be Olivia Smoliga and Ali Deloof, who were one, two in Mesa last month. So it was really, and I thought maybe Olivia Smoliga would break the American record, which she did in Mesa. Mm -hmm. um, really good start by both of them. Ali Deloof is just really coming into her own in this backstroke. She is, and she happens to be on the Coglin squad. So I was Guys. cheering, you know, as much as I was cheering for Olivia, I was really cheering for Ali here. <laughs> and so she, she scored eight points uh, with a second place, but Olivia looked very solid, had a great race, good turnover the entire time, keeping her head nice and still, um, drifting a little bit onto that yeah. lane line as everyone does. <laughs> yeah, uh, but happens. a really good finish. Yeah, it was a really good finish. And 28 I think she can't be too upset by that. You know, no. she's been really training hard. I think after Mesa, they the Georgia team has really been, really been training very, very hard. And I know they're going up to training camp in Colorado Springs, get the last few little touches before mm -hmm. they go to Irvine. When you have those knockouts, seven minutes apart is just enough time to get that pain train really <laughs> going. The lactic acid it is pumping. So by that third third 50, they're in a lot of pain. So that is a very impressive swim. It's very impressive. All right, another event we want to talk about, as you said, was Simone Manuel yes. on that women's 50 free. Yes. Like you said, 350 freestyles. It was mm -hmm. a the span of about 10, 15 minutes. And, and she actually was very conservative. Mm -hmm. I mean, she really, I think she knew what was going on around her. And then the final two, these two very familiar, Simone there on the right and Abby Weitzel. These two were representing the United States in the Olympics in the 50 freestyle. And mm -hmm. Simone just was not going to be beaten. It, it's a sign of a very mature competitor that she knew how to pace herself through these 350s. Um, you know, I believe she took two two breaths in the first one, one breath in the second one, and did no breath on, on this one and really opened up and ended up with, I think, a 2467, which is very, very good for the third 50 in 15 minutes. Yeah, and actually four 50s in the whole day. So exactly. I think it was very impressive for Simone and to, like I said, to be able to conserve that energy, which in a 50 freestyle, you can't, you, sometimes you don't really know if you can do that. Exactly, it's hard to judge, but again, she's on Coughlin's squad, so I was glad that she got the 10 <laughs> points for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's definitely gonna to help Coughlin's squad going th going forward too, because yes. now that she's done with college, yes. you know you can count on her. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we also want to mention just a a couple other great songs. Lily King, now fastest in the world in the women's 50 breaststroke. I mean, mm -hmm. she was another one who was really conservative. She went from like 31-4 in the quarterfinals, and then she went 29-6 or 7, I think. She opened up that last 50. It was truly amazing. The, she was so conservative on those first ones, just really lengthening out her stroke. And then she had that attack, like breaststroke, that we love to see out of, yeah. out of Lily. So it was fun to watch. It was amazing. It was amazing. And all these swimmers that we've been mentioning are probably going to be heading to Columbus for one final racing opportunity before USA Swimming Nationals. So you don't want to miss that. Deck Pass Live will be there, so you don't want to miss anything that we do. Deck Pass Live will be there. Of course, coverage on USAswimming.org and NBC Sports will be there as well. So don't miss out. We'll see you there. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here in Santa Clara. On behalf of Natalie and everybody behind the camera, thanks for watching.